Man, I'll tell you what, not only is this pin massive, look at the wall thickness. <laughs> oh, that thing is huge. Hey, welcome back. We've got all the guts, all the structure and strength that makes that new Cummins engine powerful and last long and get you down the road hauling those huge loads. Absolutely. You talk about dependability and durability, like I said, an evolution of the 5.9. In fact, the 5.9B engine, over 40% of the parts of that engine are carried over into this 6.7 turbo diesel. Now, here's a crankshaft. Yeah, this isn't a part you're gonna one hand and change a main bearing. Nah, it, it takes somebody like Fuller to lift this up. I'm telling you, you need his arm, right? Yeah. So the bottom line is, what Cummins did was they took an everyday truck, they found a driver who bought a 2007 Dodge truck with a 6.7 turbo diesel, heavy hauler, trailers coast to coast, 280,000 miles, pulled the engine out, ran it down the assembly line, and it passed the end of line test for a new engine. That's pretty impressive. That's amazing where, I mean, this thing is in great shape, but you know, it all starts with sort of that architecture again. An right. I-engine is great because you've got one connecting rod and piston shared between these two big bulkheads. Right. On V-engines, now you've got two trying two to share that same space, right. and you've got multiple firings on there. I mean, this thing looks fantastic. Yeah, it's got all radius fillets, beautiful piece of crankshaft. Now look at the size of this connecting rod and pin. That's I mean, a connecting rod. Yeah, that's pretty massive. And of course, this is forged steel, just to compare to a gas engine. There's a little Mitsubishi and uh, probably a two liter, two and a half liter. And show them how they built that rod. Yeah, this is kind of neat. It's a forged steel rod, but it's a fractured split technology. So instead of you know cutting the cap, they actually score it just to give it a stress concentration. And then they put an expander in here and actually pop it. So the cap separates basically by a break or a fracture. Now you can see that surface there and get these bolts out. That surface there, you know, it's a rough finish. Well, you really want to locate a joint very precisely. As this is going through its motions and it's getting pounded, it's actually ovalizing in each direction as it goes through its load. These surfaces tend to want to fret next to each other. Right. So instead of doing a dowel, I get these perfectly mated fracture surfaces when I bolt it together. Right. It's like one solid unit. And you know, here's a comparison. Here's where it's machine smooth, and they use these shoulder bolts yeah. trying to locate this. Not a lot of stresses on this engine, so it doesn't require that, but that's really great technology. And then, and then again, it's got a great oiling system. Now we move up to the top of the rod, you got the pin, now is your piston. Yeah, now you were talking about that oil gallery in here. It's got this, right. if you can see in here, a little gallery that they cast in here. Right. Um, and it goes all the way around the piston. What do you mean, like, like that? See, I've been busy. Yeah. You guys in here talking, but ooh, you got your own cutaway. Nice job. Hey, somebody hey. had to cut this engine apart. You know who made that cutaway, right? Oh, yeah. nice job. You got a new blade. I didn't know you were in that saw. business. <laughs> yeah. Well, that tells us a lot of neat things. You can see here in this cutaway, there's oil returns, but we said the oil goes through a gallery in the top of the piston, keeps that piston loaded. You can actually see that little oil gallery right there, nice. and then the oil returns to the pan. Now, also, look in the top ring man. Yeah, so they got a nice, uh, usually about a nickel steel alloy. You got so much pressure in that cylinder, and that top ring is holding it all, so it's just going to pound out that second land. Right, and of course what happens is the top of the piston will move, the ring starts to rock. If they didn't do that, it would shorten its life with this uh, nickel steel alloy in there. These pistons are going to last a long time, take all the pressure you want to give them. And you can see be what, some serious heat coming out of the top of that piston. I was going to say, you can see the proximity, so it's all about heat management. You know, you get a bigger power density you know, out of the same kind of engines that we've known for years, but it's all about controlling those temperatures, making those materials and parts last longer. Well, this is the internal component. Let's take a look at the uh, exhaust and the fuel system. Cool. Stick around. Welcome back. Now we're here with my two favorite diesel brainiacs, Sam and Bird, and we're on our brand new Cummins 6.7 liter diesel. And we're gonna kind of work you from the fuel system all the way out the exhaust. Okay, here's the deal. Here's the fuel pump. This develops 26,000 pound or 1,800 bar, which is 1,800 atmospheres equivalently. A lot of pressure. Yeah. Here's the electric injector. You can see how it compares to injector you'd find in a gas engine in a late model a car. Little difference there. Absolutely. On the business end, this is the nozzle. The, the human eye can barely see the holes in that nozzle. Can you I can see, see those? Yeah, can you yeah, see those? them? I've already counted One, them. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. No, there's not nine. They, the computer can electronically control how fast, when it happens, what kind of injection takes place. That's the heart of making this engine quiet. 
Yeah, now that's the key. So it's all about pressure and how fast it rises. So pressure rise rate. Now, if you're gonna put a quantity of fuel in there all in one time, it's spontaneous combustion essentially. So boom, it all ignites at once. But being able to do a pilot injection, a small amount of fuel and an additional amount of fuel lets you get smaller bursts. So your pressure rise rate doesn't happen so fast. Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot quieter. Got to slowly let it out in the room. <laughs> now, when I bought my diesel, it was a 07, and that was super quiet, man. People went crazy, like, man, my old diesel. You know, whereas now the new one outside, it is so much quieter than mine. Well, I'm going to make you jealous with some more things. Serviceability. <laughs> now, check this out. Here's the fuel filter. You know, the old filters were a little tough to change. This is nice. Cap on top. It's got the torque. 30.5 Newton meters stamp right into the cap. You pull the filter out. Ooh, that's rough. Filter and a filter. Yeah. Okay. And you get the O-rings with it. You want to change the O-rings when you service it. But you also have, this is your water drain. If you get water in the fuel, you can put a screwdriver in it. Quarter turn opens it. You get rid of that. Nice. How do you know if you get water in the fuel? You have a water in the fuel sensor. Never want to operate a diesel with, you know, nasty fuel. If this puts the light on, it says water and fuel, shut it off. Open this valve. And of course, for cold weather operation to help it starting in good performance, it has a fuel heater built into the housing. Really makes the system mm, great. That's nice. And nice. Yeah, that adds to the longevity of these trucks, makes them dependable, easy to service, last a long time. In fact, Cummins has got a rewards program every 100,000 miles. And they want you to keep this truck for many, many miles. These things will go 700, 800,000 without even taking a head off them. Mm. A lot of miles. Yep. Got, what is that? Yeah, now at the heart of the, you know, after treatment, You've got cool EGR. Now you may ask yourself, why would you run EGR in a diesel? Well, EGR is, you know, it's already burnt gas, it's exhaust gas recirculation. So it's burnt gas and it's essentially inert when it gets fed back into the engine, kind of like argon when you're welding. Mm -hmm. So by adding the cooler to it, I can control the temperature of this inert gas, EGR, and that controls my combustion event. Mm -hmm. So if I need it to be a little hotter, so I avoid making particulates, I can run hotter EGR, and if I need to run a little cooler so I don't make NOx gases, you know, I can cool it. So that kind of really controls the combustion event and starts to give a much better, cleaner gas coming out the exhaust. Now this is your NOx reducer. This takes the bad chemicals that are coming out of the engine, converts them into the good, which Burke can tell you what is what. So this is like greenhouse gases and, you know, acid rain forming pollutants. So it gets all absorbed in here. And you do all of this, it all works together, and you don't have to use diesel exhaust fluid like you do in so many applications today, which really saves you in maintenance and time, and the Dodge pickup with the comes in is a great way to go. Well, I'll tell you, until you came by today, Sam, I really loved my, uh, my Dodge pickup, and now I need a new one. So yeah. thanks a lot for that. <laughs> really tired of my truck now. <laughs> well, you know, I can go through the drive-through, don't have to shut the engine off. Yeah, that's hand. really nice. Well, I'm yeah. glad you came on the set with us today and had some fun. I did, boys. Brought Thank some you. cool parts with you. We're out of time, guys. See you next time on Two Guys Garage.